Here is a RoboCop Data East MPU, and this is not the reflexive model of the board since there's no chip right here. <clears throat> what uh, the problem was with this board was not reported as the alkaline when I got it, but pin seven of CN8, which is a lamp column drive, was not operating. And so that boiled down to the transistor at this location being shorted. So somebody had taken an attempt to um, replace that transistor and the traces were all hacked up. So I had to hack one in there as best I could. It is working now. But of larger concern on this board is all this alkaline corrosion that somebody attempted to abate or did abate, I guess, in the past, but they didn't get all of it. So you can see it's still there or it's continuing to spread. These pins here, down here. Uh, the worst things are these through holes. Now the fellow that did it knew how to repair the through holes. He sanded down and put a length of wire through there and soldered it on both sides. Good job. But for instance, here where R10 is, whoever did it didn't remove R10. They just sanded right up to the edge of R10 and didn't bother to look under this crystal either. So there's a lot of work that would need to be done to this board to make it 100% reliable for a long period of time. And it's just not worth doing. So I'm going to get it working and then uh, the customer can ride it as long as he can. Now I did replace the power header, this 470 microfarad cap, the 4148 and the 5817 diodes. There was a lot of corrosion in that area and I wanted to make sure that it was at least getting good clean power uh, to operate. I removed uh, the jumper that selects the clock coming out of this LS107 and uh, it was all green and corroded so I've I removed it, sanded down to bare copper and placed a new jumper in there. Here's the shorted transistor. I taped it to the board. I'm going to send it back to the client just for see if he can have some fun with it. So let me reboot. I was in the middle of testing. And now we see well, that's an interesting pattern on the uh, lamp matrix. Almost looks like a audio VU meter. Kind of cool. No coils turned on. So Let's uh, get into it. I like RoboCop myself. I think it's kind of an interesting game. I don't have a soundboard connected to it. So let's watch the display test for just a moment. And I don't think there's any reason for me to go through this whole thing. Data East at this stage of development was really slow with some of the tests that they'd implemented. Let's skip that. All right, here's where we might have had some difficulty. I've got my <clears throat> Victor designed and created switch tester. I'm gonna go across the diagonal of the switch matrix, proving that all rows and columns are now operating. Excellent. No active switches, no bad switches. Look at all of the lamp matrix operating at the same time. And then we can do the returns. And the drives. And we could even do individual lamps. Let's skip that part. So here's the coils and get the camera down there quick enough to catch coil one. I did see it operate. I try not to give you guys nausea with the camera. Also at this stage, Diddy's hadn't multiplexed the coils. So this would normally be lighting the blue light and then a red light, but not the way, oh, I take it back. Here we go. Here's the multiplex coils. My 
mistake. And then there's back to one, the special solenoids. Since I said this was not a reflexive board, you have to test them with switch inputs, and that tests all those. These are the flipper power enable relays. Those are good too. Everything's operating. And I go to the last test and then the board reboots. So it's good to go for now. Heaven knows how long it will last. And it's just too, too much would be involved to get this really working for a good long time again. Thanks so much for sending it.